Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. We're here at ServiceNow Knowledge at the Aria Hotel in Las Vegas. We've been going wall-to-wall -wall coverage for the last two days. This is theCUBE, where we bring you the best guests that we can find. We go into the events like this, and we try to give you a sense as to what's happening at the shows, what the themes are, what the main messages are, and then we try to test those against what customers are actually saying. Uh, some of the innovations that we're hearing today are all about transforming IT, about allowing uh, people that want to, that don't necessarily have programming experience, build new applications, things like application you know, builders that are, that are more intuitive than what you might find if you, know, you tried to sit down and do a Python programming or programming <laughs> even Heroku. But so, uh, some great uh, uh, automation tools and discussions that we've been having today. Jim Pitts is here. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, cloud automation. Uh, he's with ServiceNow. He's involved in the whole cloud automation piece of the business and uh, it's a very exciting and fast-growing field. Jim, thanks for coming on. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak here today. So cloud is, uh, is the real deal, right? We, for, for, for a while, it's like cloud was just, you'd, you'd Google cloud and so much stuff would come up, it was all kind of noise and people were sort of debating what cloud was and is cloud just a buzzword and now it's you know, pretty much accepted uh, business as usual. So, it, it feels like now the discussion is, okay, how can we get the most out of cloud? We got our private clouds, and what makes clouds, you know, what makes private clouds cloud is things like orchestration and, and, and automation. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. So you guys uh, have made some announcements uh, today, I believe, right? Yeah, so, that's right. That's well, right. let's start with the news. What, what did you announce? Uh, we introduced um, our cloud provisioning application. It's um, our first automation based on our um, orchestration product line. Um, cloud, cloud provisioning makes it easy for our customers to uh, extend their service catalog, to um, offer their internal customers virtual resources um, in a self-service fashion. Very easy to uh, order and have delivered um, virtual resources uh, when, you, when you want them. Um, from, from the ServiceNow service catalog. We've been doing a number of cloud shows. We were at the OpenStack show, we were at the AWS Summit, we were at EMC World last week, which is kind of cloud. Um, <laughs> you know, VMware certainly is, is cloud. I feel like we're entering a, a new phase of cloud. So the, the, the first was, well, beyond introduction, and, you know, the Amazon cloud, and obviously you guys and, 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 and Salesforce have your version of cloud. But we, in 2009, 2008, 2009, with the economic downturn, you saw a lot of people just try to get to variable expense as fast as possible. And then 2010, 2011, you kind of had, you came out of the economic downturn and you had this shadow IT trend, um, you know, kind of into even, even last year. And now you're starting to see just greater levels of exploitation, um, deeper business integration. So how does ServiceNow, what role do you play in terms of that cloud orchestration? I presume you're cloud agnostic. Right, if I That's right. That's right. Provision the Amazon cloud or an OpenStack cloud or the IBM cloud. You don't care, right? So, talk about a little bit more about what value you provide there and what role you play. You know, with um, the the ease at which virtual resources can be provisioned, um, they tend to proliferate very rapidly. But with that um, proliferation comes uh, the the regular management overhead you would have with a physical server. Those resources still need to be tracked, you need to know who owns them, what they're being used for, um, how long they need to be, uh, be used, they still consume resources. And um, over time, that rapid uh, proliferation ultimately creates a management debt that, that you know, brings the people in ID, IT to their, to their knees. It's a phenomenon of VM sprawl that's been you know, plaguing the market for a very long time. And that uh, isn't as much a problem as it is a symptom of IT being very infrastructure focused as opposed to being very service focused, you know, really understanding what the services are that their customers want, the terms under which they should be delivered, um, and then ultimately providing full life cycle management for those virtual assets. And that's, that's where ServiceNow really has its strength, helping our customers build out their front door to IT, um, understanding the services their customers want to consume, and then making them available in a self-service fashion so they can easily come and request those resources, but do it in a way that doesn't accrue this pile of management debt that, that will overwhelm, um, overwhelm IT. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, we're going to play analyst here. Um, oh no. <laughs> if you had a gut feel it, no, seriously, if you had a gut feel it, you're going to, you're going to love this question. Punch him in the shoulder. You're, you're a cloud you. guy, I can ask you this. So, <laughs> so, so if you had a gut feel it, what percent of IT practitioners um, worldwide 
are what you would consider, or IT organizations are, would you consider to be truly delivering IT as a service? I, I would say it's, uh, it's uh, very few, truly. Single but, digit? Um, that would be pure speculation. It would, wouldn't surprise me. I would say... All right, less um, than 50%. I would say certainly less than 20%, right? Is that fair? And we're making up numbers here, so none of this really matters, but, but, <laughs> but low, relatively low numbers, You're right? making up numbers, yeah. yeah. Right, but, 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 the, the, but, but it's not 80%. But it's clear it's not, if, you're, if you're listening to the, uh, the voice of our customers at this conference, the tone is consistent. They're trying to understand how to become the front door to IT. You know, they want to have a consistent user experience, have a consistent user experience where people know where they can go to to get virtual resources, but also uh, business cards, uh, request changes, um, order new software, onboarded new employees. Um, the management of that front door, the management of that user experience, understanding um, what your customers want, becoming service-centric is a challenge that IT is, is addressing now, and it's not just for cloud. Uh, we've made that easy with our cloud provisioning application, but with our orchestration offering, uh, we're making it easy to reduce the friction for all the other services that IT wants to uh, deliver okay, to their customers. Okay, so now let's just talk about just the 1,600 and whatever, 48 ServiceNow customers. If you had <laughs> to narrow the scope to that data point, uh, would you say that you're a larger proportion of your customer base is, has achieved IT as a service? I think they're far closer to achieving it than they were, um, were several years ago. They definitely uh, recognize that they need to ultimately uh, move to a state of being more of a service provider to the business rather than just the owner of uh, the debt that the in infrastructure carries with it. If you're, if you're, so let's define IT as a service a little bit. What, what, is, what is that vision of IT as a service in your mind? We, we see IT as a service as a consistent experience for the services that IT offers its customers. We, we view it as a service catalog, but if you look at um, samples of what uh, customers uh, present from their IT departments, they all have uh, a different way of presenting that present. Some of the customers here have chosen to present IT self-service um, as a physical human being. I talked to a customer here just recently who went and hired an employee from an Apple Genius Bar, and um, they oh, uh, set up appointments, uh, literally, uh, they, 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 they've taken a uh, service desk away from the desk, and, um, and you set up appointments um, through the ServiceNow service catalog where people go to get one-on-one -on -one help from IT. Um, other customers have created their own uh, customized interface that aligns with their branding uh, that makes it attractive for customers, uh, their internal customers to go to. Uh, they know IT is accountable. They know that the, everything that they need is kind of going to be there. If it's not an automated self-service, then the contact information is going to be there to, to drive and fulfill their request. So are, you, are you an Apple customer? Uh, I have... Uh, I, I have uh, three teenagers, have you ever had and I own many versions have you ever of had everything. Have Genius Bar? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going to ask your customer, maybe watch out when, that, when demand starts to get really high for that Genius Bar. But, yeah. but it is funny how this whole theme of kind of what, what you do on the weekend, now I want during the week, in terms of my IT experiences, that, that you know, I'm used to, I want to go to the Genius Bar, I want the same kind of but a think thing. about the, uh, the bold, how bold a customer is to reinvent IT like that, oh, and, feel confident that they, and feel confident they can deliver they can deliver that's, on that's that. That's the key. I mean, right. that, yeah. that really is your point, is right. the fact that they can actually set up a Genius Bar, whether or not you like the Genius Bar <laughs> model, right. which right. obviously you can tell I'm not a huge fan <laughs> of, but the fact that you can actually deliver that, it's a brilliant, it's great for Apple, right? Because they can, they can just identify, you don't even have to talk to a human, you go online, you can't talk to a human. So that's you know, driving automation to the maximum level. But Jim, what I, what I wanted to ask you is the, the uh, cloud automation is great, you know, now IT can help be more effective, but but clearly that's not the only piece that's causing people to drop their credit card and dial up AWS. So you know, what other things do they have to do transformationally for people and process and kind of attitude that will enable them to get that order, if, if you will, uh, from, the, from the customer rather than them going to Well, you have to, you, you, you know, once you set up this storefront for IT, you have to, just like any um, online presence, you need to, uh, to study it and tune it. So the way that an online vendor does it is they look at the data coming back from orders that are being fulfilled. They understand what's popular on Monday, what's popular on Tuesday, which things are, are people ordering, and they tune that, that online experience. In the cloud provisioning application uh, that we've introduced, we have uh, this concept of a service operations portal that allows you to um, look at your provisioning service for a public or private cloud, understand um, which departments are um, requesting virtual resources, 
um, understanding uh, what types of resources they're pulling down so you can look and say, you know, uh, I was asked to put this um, Red Hat Linux uh, test system up on my, my, my service catalog, but for some reason, um, people have stopped ordering it. Do I need to keep that around, or do I need to contact the, uh, the, the, uh, the customers I think need it and ask them, could I do a better job uh, provisioning that image for you? Mm -hmm. So it um, really allows um, our customers to be more service-centric. Think of the front door to IT as um, their business, the front door to their business, right, right. And, uh, and, 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 and manage it very much like you would a kind of a commercial, you know, commercial offering. Yeah, and there were some great examples of that, I think, in, in Frank's keynote the first day with, with people using you know, store icons and a, and a store look and feel to, they, they're to do that branding. Yeah, they definitely see themselves, and, and, and UL, you'll see the uh, actual company branding make it into the service catalog. They, they're really trying to align themselves closer to the business uh, by thinking more as a, as a service, speaking in uh, business terminology, not just uh, tech, tech talk. Not tech right? fulfillment, right. Yeah. right. yeah. What are you seeing in terms of, uh, we, 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 we love this thing, this concept of shadow IT, everybody's unrunning the organization, then you come to service now, knowledge, and you, you hear, oh, they're not running around to IT, they're actually, you guys are Army serving them. IT. So, <laughs> it's kind of an interesting trend. Uh, I talked about shadow IT before, you see Amazon, you know, a lot of customers are really afraid of Amazon early on, talk about you know, SLA issues and, and security issues, and now here you have um, Amazon going after the enterprise. You obviously, we talked before, but you guys are agnostic to that. Are you seeing a big adoption in your customer base of, of Amazon, and, and how is that fitting into your service catalog, your kind customer of, service kind of non, catalog? I guess it would be like non-shadow Amazon, yeah, you know, right. front door Amazon. Yeah, that's really the point. Is, <laughs> is, a front is, door is Are you seeing your customers embrace Amazon as kind of a bulwark against the shadow IT? Or do you uh, expect that? Well, we, we, do, we do see a lot of customers using um, Amazon. Um, that's why we support it in cloud provisioning in our first release. Um, and, um, and so uh, cloud provisioning will discover the machine images that um, uh, you have access to, allow you to promote those to service catalog items uh, very easily and make them orderable. Um, but we'll also find which, uh, serv which, which uh, VMs are not being managed by the catalog, by the, uh, by the solution as well. So you can kind of get a sense of um, you know, uh, which resources have been requested through this, the, the service catalog, are under management policy. Um, and maybe perhaps which ones uh, are not. And that's, a, again, a cause for a conversation with your customer. Uh, can we bring uh, these unmanaged VMs that we have into our service catalog as standardized offerings? What can we, better, what can we do to better serve you? Right. Yeah. All right, so. we're out of time. I'm sorry, Jim, we got to roll. <laughs> no, we got Mike Scarpelli this hook. year. We're going to get into it with the <laughs> CFO of service now next. Uh, so, Jim, thanks for coming by, sharing the, yeah. the news. Uh, good luck with the announcement. and. Uh, Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Oh, thank you very much. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest, and uh, this is theCUBE.